Well, good evening and welcome to Grace Community Church's All for the Families hymn sing. We hope you're all doing well. We hope you're comfortable there at home where, where, or wherever you are. And uh, as we pulled up to the church this evening, we saw Bonnie and Joanne serving some folks, uh, some meals and and some needy meals. And, and so it was really neat just to see part of our church body at work here delivering meals to our to the families in our community and and uh butch garris is playing with us tonight and so we asked him just to say a, a few words as he's the point man for our for our, our our meal meal service team so butch so just just a couple updates what we've done is we've started we've asked uh, some of the people that our church grace to prepare meals and and serve them to uh families in our community not only families in our congregation but families in the community uh, pastor james puts on his facebook um and there's a there's a set number so we know how much uh, food to prepare and how much how many people will be coming to hand out food to. Um, it's right around 50 right now. But so here's how it works. You reach out to James. Uh, James schedules you for that day that you can pick up a meal. It's Right now it's Sundays and Wednesdays where you come and pick up a meal cooked for, uh, from four to eight people. We've had as many as 11 in a family being served. And then we've just added a day. We've added, uh, starting a week from yesterday, we've added another day of what we call box meal. So you will be given a box of food, um, uncooked food. So it, it should get you or a small family through a couple of days until you can get back and get another meal here. Uh, Lynn had a great idea about for those that are have a lot of um, gardens at home or gardens around Madeira that you come to, come to Grace Community Church, um, bring some of your, your vegetables or bring some of your fresh fruit so we can put it in that box. And everybody will get the same thing, you know, uh, maybe a, a loaf of bread or a box of mac and cheese or some, some vegetables and some fruit. Th that is, um, that is a, a great thing and, and a blessing for us really to be able to do that for the, for the, uh, the neighborhood. And, and here's an interesting fact is w the church and the people, I think you guys are going to cook up next to Jerry and Lynn. Um, you guys have fed, I'm talking to our congregation, you guys have fed about 100 and as of tonight, about 175 people and a lot of those people do not come from grace community church and that is that is huge that that is showing a, a, a huge need um for us to be the body the body of christ and um, the other thing is is people are coming from as far away as as central fresno to come here to get a meal that will feed them for a day or a day and a half um th and the things that the families are going through is they're very difficult things and they're coming out here and, and they're just getting a, a warm food and we pray with them as they come. We give them um, a little pamphlet of who Jesus Christ is. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a double blessing, if you will. We, we get to be blessed by giving them, and, and they get to be, bl be blessed by getting the food. Um, again, Lynn had a great idea about families that have chickens um, in, in our congregation. Bring your, um, bring your chicken eggs here. And I, I guarantee you they'll be handed out. We were giving out full turkeys from Bonnie. Bonnie brought turkeys down. We gave out full turkeys to us. I think eight people got full turkeys. That'll last them a couple days. Um, yeah, that's just a couple updates. Oh, one last thing. So as you're out shopping, again, Lynn, you brought this up too. As you're out shopping, pick up a can of uh, refried beans. Grab a, can, grab a package of tortillas. Bring them down to the church. Find a way to get a hold of me or, or Pastor James or Brandon. Or if you see someone here, bring them and we'll put them in um, the storehouse, if you will. And we'll prepare meals with that. Um, it totally a, b a blessing, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yep. What a great outreach that is to uh, families in our community, as well as sounds like those families from the Fresno community and uh, absolutely wherever they come from. Absolutely, it's amazing to watch God's people at work and in, in helping these needy families that are out there. So the first song we're going to sing, the first hymn we're going to sing, is a song is a hymn that was written by Charles Sylvester Horn around uh, the 1890s. We don't have an exact date on it, uh, but it's called Sing to the King, and this is a song that's real familiar with Grace Community Church, but there's actually a total of five verses to this to this song, and a guy by the name of Billy Foote came in, and he wrote a more contemporary version, added the chorus to it, so this is just a great song that has some great words to it called Sing to the King. <laughs> Sing. 
sing to the King who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation His empire shall bring. Joy to the nations when Jesus is King. So come, let us sing a song, a song declaring that we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise, sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King For His returning We watch and we pray We will be ready The dawn of that day We'll join in singing With all the redeemed Cause Satan is vanquished And Jesus is sing a song, a song declaring that we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise, sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. So come, let us sing a song. Sing to the King, sing to the King, sing to the King. This next song was written in 1865 by Alvina M. Hall, and she uh, conceived the idea for this song by sitting in the choir loft while listening to her pastor's pr uh, prayer, and her mind turned uh, to our need for salvation and the price that Jesus paid for it. And while she's in this church loft, she scribbled down these words as they came to her. And after writing this hymn, she took her she took the words to this song and finished it all up. And on this one day, um, she by what she calls extraordinary coincidence, she took the she uh, she took it to her pastor, who was the pastor at the Monument Street Methodist Church of Baltimore. And at the about the same time, their organist, a guy by the name of John Grape, he had recently written a new tune, and he had dropped that off to his pastor to hear for himself. The pastor heard this new tr new tune from John Grape saw the words of this song, Jesus Paid It All, that was written by Elvina M. Hall, and he put the two of them together, and they happened to, to fit very well together. And this song has now turned out to be one of the most beloved hymns of the church that has now come into being. So this is a song called Jesus Paid It All, and it was written in 1865. The Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson. 
crimson stain he washed in white as snow. Before the throne, I stand in him complete. Jesus died my soul to save. My lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all, all to him I own. A crimson stain he washed in white as snow. The last hymn we're going to sing tonight is a song called Take My Life. And this song was written in 1874 by Frances Havergale. And it's a testament to her dedication to the Lord because as she begins each line of the hymn with the word take, meaning offered in service to God. And she was uh, saying in this article that she wrote that she took a, a little five-day vacation to Switzerland and this house that she was staying in, staying in consisted of about uh, 10 other people that were in the house. She, she states that some of them were unconverted and long prayed for, and some were converted but not rejoicing Christians. So then she said that God gave her this prayer the last night of her visit, and she was just too happy to sleep, and she prayed for the household mm. most of the night. And then the words of the song were uh, chiming in her heart one after the other till they finished with these words, ever only, all for thee. And that's how this song finishes. And this lady, she mentions in the song, in the second verse, 
take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. She actually did that. She actually, because um, there's so many of us like me who we have all these great things that we want to do for our Savior and our God, but we talk about it, but we don't do it. And and But this lady actually did it. She took all of her jewelry and she gave it to a uh, church society in her local area, and they were able to sell it and, and do God's work in the community. So it was just a... It's just a great story just to read about. And I encourage you guys to, to look up these hymns and read about them and find out about where these people were in their life when they wrote them. It's really a, it's really a, a cool thing to see how God was really working in their lives. So this song was called Take My Life, written in 1874 by Francis Havergale. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, for Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow and cease this praise. Take my hands and let them move. At the impulse of thy love, take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power.
Well, we hope you had a wonderful time just singing these songs along with us. They're such great songs, and and again, I encourage you just to kind of look them up and find out about where they uh, where they actually came from and and where the person's heart was when they when they wrote these songs. So, I'm gonna pray. We thank you for God for uh, just this time together with uh, our church body. Even though we may be sitting in our homes or our places places of work or school or where, wherever we may be. Uh, um, doing homework, whatever whatever we're doing, that that uh, you just uh, continue to just reside in our heart and to continue to let us think about things that we can do for our community, uh, because it's not about us; it's a uh, it's all about what we can do for for our community as as you work through us. And and but the most important thing is you residing in our heart and and see people seeing Christ in us. And we thank you for the food ministry that's going on right now and. Uh, the, the food that's being prepared and being served up to those people in the community that are so needy and, and just need, need the nutrition from it. And uh, what a wonderful thing that is. Uh, continue to be with us in these next few weeks as we uh, try to survive this virus that's going around this globe that you created. Continue to be with our president, our governor, our local leaders. Uh, just get them to make the right decisions for what your people need. So we thank you for your son, Jesus, as he was put on that cross for each of us. What a wonderful thing that is. What a gift of love it is. So we pray for these things in your most precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Good night.